thank you for tuning in. Before I get started, I wanted to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. It's hard to believe that 2021 is coming to a close. And speaking of, I've had this sweep wings juggernaut sitting on my workbench uh, for a few months and really just working towards getting the this conversion done. I've taken care of all of the physical aspects, but in this video, I want to cover a few final steps that I had to go through. So in the next video, I can hopefully demonstrate a successful transition to forward flight back to hover and then land. So in this video, I'm going to cover uh, the tuning that I had to do since this is based off the E-Flight convergence frame, which was a smaller one, as well as the Elevon mixing, because if you don't get either of those right, uh, your chances of success are a lot smaller. So I'm going to dive into those. We'll cover that in this video. I'll end with a position hold test. And then in the next video, I'm going to do the uh, maiden transition and hopefully all goes well. So let's dive into it. I'll take off in the garage and we'll listen to the oscillations from coming from the multi-copter pids, which are too high for this airframe. Those oscillations are not good. So what I did next was go into Q ground control, PID tuning, and work really on roll, pitch, and yaw. So I mess with the rate controller, and we'll take a quick look at uh, what the defaults look like as we chart them out. In my opinion, there is not an exact science to uh, PID tuning. Here is the roll axis that shows uh, the rate controller pids, and you'll notice that the uh, set point and response are a little bit off. In this clip, I've brought the pitch down a bit for both roll and pitch of the rate controller, and you'll notice that uh, the set point and the response are tracking a little bit better. You can still hear a little bit of oscillation, but I learned later that that is coming from uh, the yaw axis. Here I've brought uh, the yaw pids down, and you'll notice that uh, there's much less oscillation in this clip. Now, the set point and response are a bit off. That means I've gone a bit too low on my gains, but I was able to bring them back up and get to a closer uh, set point or response on the yaw axis. I then went ahead and bumped up the yaw pids uh, a bit You'll notice that it's tracking better in this clip. Now, it's not perfect, but I did uh, go through and do some more tuning. I won't bore you guys with all the details of the entire tune, but once again, it's not an exact science, and the PX4 documentation is amazing. I'll put a link to it below, and that's uh, really a lot of what I used uh, during this process that's got me to a place of um, comfort when it comes to just uh, getting out there and flying in multi-copter mode and doing a position hold, which we'll take a look at next. I currently have two modes for multi-copter set up. The flight modes are stabilized, so I'm going to take off and stabilize. Uh, just make sure that everything responds correctly, and then I'll switch to position hold. I've switched to position mode and so far I'm just really impressed with how well this is behaving in the air. You guys know with a VTOL there's a lot of surface area up there and when I did this flight there was actually a lot of wind on this day. So I've just been testing position mode, make sure the GPS and everything is working properly and then uh, I'll bring it down. Still in position mode, uh, but just lowering my throttle, bringing it to the ground and disarming. So feel good about being able to get up in the air and uh, transition to forward flight. The next thing that I was up against with uh, this build was just the behavior in forward flight. Now, uh, this is me manually giving input to my elevons and those were actually inverted. You can fix that from your transmitter as you guys know, but you can't fix the output. And 
uh, that's what I was most concerned with. And when I mean by output, I'm going to toggle to forward flight mode and uh, let the flight controller uh, handle the uh, stabilization. So if you see I roll to the right, my right elevon goes up. Roll to the left, the left elevon goes up. That's actually incorrect. You know, we, it, the goal is to keep it stable. And in those situations, it actually amplifies uh, the roll. So if I pitch up, the elevons go up. I pitch down, the elevons go down, which, which once again is incorrect. Uh, that would definitely send us into a quick nose dive. So while we can change the inputs from the transmitter, what we ultimately need to do is fix the outputs uh, so that the control surfaces are pitching and rolling in the right directions. Before I headed down the path of messing with the PX4 mixer files for this configuration, I hooked up my PWM meter and measured the output on port 7 and 8. 7 goes to the right elevon, 8 goes to the left elevon, and I was thinking that I could just switch uh, those, those servo leads going to each of the elevons and it would take care of things, but what I ultimately discovered is that uh, even though switching them I switched them out, it still led me to uh, the same uh, orientation or position of these elevons and it turns out because these servos are inverted, you know, physically one points to the right, one points to the left, PWM output led it to uh, still rotate in the same direction. So uh, what I ultimately had to do was dive into the a mixer file for the convergence. If you're not familiar with the concept of mixers or mixing in PX4, there's a great document that talks about all of this and I'll put a link to it in the description below, but I'm not going to dive into all the details. I'm happy to do a separate video if you guys uh, would like to learn more. It definitely took me a while to fully grasp what's going on, but the main thing that we're current concerned about is this control group number one which affects VTOL flight control. And if you've ever used Q ground control, you'll know that uh, you select an airframe and then all this magic happens. So in this case, we have the uh, convergence airframe, which is what this build is based off of. And just a shout out to Andreas Antoner for uh, doing a lot of the legwork for the convergence, which I'm very appreciative of. And as we discovered earlier, I did a bunch of tuning uh, away from the convergence PIDs, but at the bottom you'll see this mixer. It's a reference to VTOL convergence, and what you can do is uh, look at these uh, different outputs. So this is the Elevon mixers, and what I ultimately had to do was invert these uh, so that uh, I get the proper direction for my Elevons. On the right I have the mixing configuration that uh, I changed from the defaults on the left. This is what we have in GitHub. And you'll notice on the right, we have uh, all of these values inverted. These are come in groups. So this refers to our left elevon. This refers to the right elevon, the roll and pitch, and roll and pitch. And if you look at these values, they've just uh, all been inverted and uh, everything should work as expected. And you may be wondering, as I was, how do you get these uh, mixings to actually apply on boot? And uh, what you do is on your SD card, I have this uh, currently plugged into my PC, the SD card from my PixHawk 4 Mini. You'll create a folder called Etsy Mixers, and I have uh, the same file name that you see here in GitHub, VTOL convergence.main.mix. This configuration is loaded in and our mixers are applied. So we'll take a look at that now. When PX4 boots, the mixing configuration is loaded. I'll go ahead and arm, and we'll just check the manual control of the elevons. And our roll right, right elevon goes up, roll left. Then we pitch forward and back. Our elevons go in the proper direction. The next thing I'll do is toggle into forward flight. You'll see those forward motors tilt down. And then what I'll do is just roll the airframe uh, right and left. So as I roll to the right, the left elevon goes up, which is what we want. I roll to the left, the right elevon goes up. 
and then next I'll pitch up. We should see both elevons go down, pitch down, both elevons come up. Now I feel fully confident that all the configuration is correct, so the next thing I'm going to do is delay no longer. We're going to uh, take this out to the field, get it up at a good altitude, transition forward, fly around for a bit, transition back, and then land. So thank you guys for following along, and stay tuned for the next video.